Well, good morning. And imagine that, I got something else to fix. We're down here in Orlando, and I was walking around the RV just checking things out, and something caught my eye. I thought, well, that doesn't look right, that oily residue. That had, I didn't notice that before. So I got to digging around, kind of poked my head in here, and I seen some oil up top, transmission fluid, hydraulic oil. And then I looked down here, and I seen oil all over the, I guess that's the manifold. Across the top, we've got four check valves, kind of gold-looking caps. Those are four check valves, I believe. And I've blown an O-ring on one, so today's challenge is to get all this cleaned up really good, get them, get them out, find a new O-ring, and get them replaced. So I'll show you a little bit how I tracked it down exactly. Okay. Because first, I wasn't exactly sure where it was coming from. I just seen oil up there. I didn't know if it was a hydraulic line, a fitting, or what happened. So, I got my little jumper cable here. If you want to just momentarily pressurize the system, because this, this large one here, that's coming straight off the battery. And this is the, uh, the, the signal wire that activates the solenoid. Alright, so I'll show you how I found the leak. Get the camera in the right spot. Bump it. There you go. A nice big spray. And it's just getting worse. So I'm going to get me some brake cleaner. Get my air compressor out. Look, I have to carry this stuff with me here because we're I'm far from home. But see all this dirt and grit, all that nasty stuff? You know, that's the critical thing you got to be careful of. You want to make sure all that is very, very clean when you're dealing with hydraulics. You absolutely, absolutely don't want no grit, dirt, or anything falling down those holes. So I'm going to get me some brake cleaner, spray that real good, and uh, take my air compressor and blast it with a blast of air, and make sure everything's clean and dry before I start pulling those check valves out. So I'll gather up some tools and get this project okay, started. So there's my compressor, my brake cleaner, and I'll show you what it looks like now. It's much better. Got all that grit and dirt and gone. Everything's nice and clean, so now when I take those check valves out, I won't get no grit down into the manifold. We'll find the right size socket, get a couple of these out, and see what o-ring we need. Okay, well I believe I, believe I found out why the o-ring blew. By the way, if you need to take this off, it takes a 16 millimeter socket. But when I put my socket on here, it was just finger tight. So it didn't take anything to break it loose. Actually, the first three were, were that way, just uh, just barely snug. Now this one was, was tight. It, it took a, a little bit of pressure to get that one broke loose. But these other three were not. As uh, far as I know, these have never been touched in 15 years. It's a 2005. I've never had the need to pull these check valves out. So probably it'd be a good idea on your maintenance routine or sometime or other, just Next time you're mucking around your RV, grab you a 16 millimeter socket, short extension, and just snug these up. Just make sure they're tight, because this one loosened up, and of course when it loosened up, it, it allowed the uh, high pressure oil to come out and split the O-ring. So uh, I'll, I'll get me some O-rings on there, and we'll put it together. Okay, well I've got two of the four installed. I just wanted to show, in case you want to know what these valves look like. Try to get out here this time where you can see better. A little windy today, trying to keep things from blowing away. We're down here at Tropical Palms Campground down here. I think this is in Celebration, Florida, near the Orlando, Disney and all that stuff. So I had to run down the road, found a place about nine miles down the road called Southern Hydraulics. So they had the, and I was asking them particularly, what is this sealed called? Because, you know, so when, if this happens to someone else, you will not want to know what to ask for. And they call it, it's a, it's called a number four boss fitting. This is, I guess, not just a number four O-ring. And it said the industry standard would be just called a 604, the O-ring is. And the 568 is the manufacturing number. But a 604 O-ring, I guess, is what this is called. So, and actually, I got me a, I got me eight of them. So I'll have me four spares for the future. So if ever need that again, but I was going to show you the one that split. Where'd it go? There it is. That's the one that split on me. Where it got loose, that the hydraulic oil just pushing past it until it finally blew. 
and here's what your check valve looks like and this is just this little plastic no spring or nothing so if you take it off you think you lost a spring there is none so uh, that's how how, the, how those work simple I guess does its job so I'm gonna roll me um, two new o-rings on there and torque, and snug them up they should be very tight and then I'll uh, Put a pressure test on it and see how it works. Alright, new O-rings are installed and it's surprising how much pressure it takes to roll those dudes on there. Pretty tight. It kind of drops down in that machine groove. And I got that done. So I'm going to uh, put these back together. Snug them up. Okay, I'm going to try to do this one-handedly so you can see how it's done. There's a little, little check valve. Drop it down in the hole. I can't hardly see it too good. There we go. Alright. So there that is. Just line that up. And, and just watch when you put the brass piece on it. You line up with the hole and tighten it down. There ain't nothing to it. Easy peasy. Mix in the RV and, and the campground. Sometimes that's what you got to do. Okay, time for the pressure test. Just jump these two wires right here. Let's labor the pump. No leaks. Alright, I think we're good to go. That took care of all. I was going to talk about this. You know, if you know, if you don't know, to check the oil in this this tank right here, your dipstick is sort of down in here in, a, in this mess of wires. I'll locate it for you here. It's a little black plastic, right? Oh, here it is. Hard to see in there. But anyway, if you go to check your oil, there's all kinds of dirt and grit gets on top of that. So you want to be extremely careful. You know, you want to spray some kind of brake cleaner, blast it with some air, do something. So when you ever remove that to check it, that you don't accidentally drop a bunch of grit right down into your oil reservoir. So you want to keep everything about hydraulics very clean. And because you can see, I've got oil sprayed up here and around, so I'm going to use my some brake cleaner and spray around to dry this stuff up, kind of get things looking a little bit cleaner. Oh yeah, one more thing I meant to mention. Uh, you might want to add something like this to your toolbox. They're very handy for, for jumping solenoids, for testing something, something like carry that heavy load. You know, just like our solenoids, like with, with our RV here, the, we've got those solenoids underneath the, the steps that can, when you start the engine, how they connect the engine alternator to the house charging batteries as you're driving down the road. Once upon a time, I had that to go bad. And when it went bad, my house batteries would not take a charge. That was long ago before I even had solar or anything. So in a situation like that, you could use a, this, this heavy jumper cable on both sides of the solenoid to get your batteries to, to, to charge. And then when you got a new solenoid in, just remove it and go back to where it's supposed to be. But a handy little thing to have in your toolbox for jumping things. Yes. Well, I've cleaned it up some, it's a little bit better, but boy, on, on top of this tank, back underneath all these wires, it's still a fifth filthy, dirty, gritty mess. So, uh, all right, air compressor. Um, so, um, when I get home, my plan is to get me some good degreaser, to soak all this area really good, try to get all that grit out of there and get it dried up well. Because uh, one last step I gotta do is before we leave is raise up the jacks, bring in all the rooms and check the oil level. And of course, to do that, once I bring in the rooms, I can open up that door to the storage compartment ac and access that little square hole there. And I can get in here and get access to that dipstick. But then again, I got, like I said before, I gotta be very careful about not, not allowing any dirt or grit to fall down into that hole. So all in all, I think this project is took care of. No more leaks, I've cleaned up the oil under there. So all is good. Until the next project, thanks for watching, and have a great day.